As we travel through life's experiences, things can change. It changes your life. I thought, like, for an example, I was going to have twins. <laughs> That's what the nurse was saying. <laughs> the week later, I'm having triplets. Well, that event can change your life. Madam Toastmaster, most welcome guest, and fellow Toastmasters, your past experiences define your character, who you are. Let me tell you of a story that defined who I am. Before becoming a teacher, I was actually a recreational therapist. And it's a weird, interesting field of study. It required you to take recreational activities and treat patients with disabilities. It was a unique experience. Never played dominoes the same way again. I remember I had completed my uh, internship, and I had to do it in a long-term care facility. So I was giving this patient, her name was Mary. What an awesome person. I had a really great time. So I said, I, I said to myself, let me go and check out her file. Good. I grabbed the file. Knocked on the door and I said, good morning, Mary. You have had the same reaction. It's awesome. <laughs> she looked at me with a great big smile and said, what are you doing here? <laughs> I was like, well, this is a good start. So every day I came in and asked how she's feeling. And every day she tells me, oh, pretty good. And we would play some chess. She's an avid chess player. You figure out what she likes to do. And as one day I was playing chess with her, she constantly was telling me about her daughter, which I've never seen. And her daughter was um, having good fond memories and, the, and good times. And then I asked her one day playing chess, Mary, where is she, your daughter? All of a sudden, that smile turned to the biggest frown and I started to get scared. She said to me, never ever ask about her again. She flipped the chessboard, chess pieces going all over the place. And I'm like, okay, this is not good. She said, get out of my room. I walked away and it was the strangest feeling Everybody at the nursing station stopped what they were doing and looked at me. It is really an awkward feeling. Hopefully you don't experience that. I'm determined, I was, I'm sorry, I was determined to go back and see what happened. So, grabbed up my chess board again, my chess pieces, set it up and asked, So Mary, how you're doing? She let me know how she's doing. She made sure that she's only going to mention about her daughter. She mentioned her daughter's name was Sarah. And she said she never saw her since she went to the nursing home. It was a pretty sad situation. So one time Sarah looked at me straight in the eye and says, David, I need you to find my daughter. Wow, what a statement. So I said, Mary, I'm going to find your daughter. I walk out of the room, ask the social worker, do you know what happened to her daughter? The social worker laughed in my face and said, oh, 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 oh. let me tell you there, Davy, she doesn't exist. She doesn't exist. So Mary is telling me she has a daughter. Her social worker is telling me she doesn't have a daughter. Well, what am I going to do? So I tried to ignore it and figured, okay, maybe she's trying to play me. <clears throat> A couple of days later, she asked me again, David, did you find my daughter? I had to lie. But I said, I'm looking for her right now as we speak. I will find your daughter. 
I walked out of the room feeling really, really bad. And I decided to ignore the social worker's statement and did my own research. Yeah, sure enough, she existed. But she passed two weeks after she entered the nursing home. It was in her best interest not to tell her, not to tell Mary. I was determined to tell her, despite what they were saying. So I said to myself, Monday morning, I'm going to tell her. And I spent all weekend figuring out how am I going to tell Mary that she had a daughter that passed away two weeks after you arrived at the nursing home. Well, the weekend was over and Monday was here. I look at my patient list and files. She's not there. Now, I know exactly what that means. She's actually on another list that we have in the nursing home. A list of patients who didn't make it through the weekend. I was devastated. I didn't have a chance to tell her that she had a daughter. It was terrible. At that moment, something clicked for me and I realized there is no way I can become a recreational therapist for the rest of my life. I was too emotionally connected to the patients that I was dealing with. But I needed to support the family and I needed to find a job. So I took the skills that I learned as a recreational therapist and I started to teach Microsoft Word and Excel at an up and coming computer company. 18 years later, I'm traveling the world teaching about computer networks to multi-billion dollar projects and uh, countries. Now that's a great chance and feeling and it's a perfect example how events in the past change your future, can make a difference. I've learned a couple of other things. Never hold back what you could have done today. I decided not to tell Mary on Friday, thinking that she's going to make it through the weekend, and then I'm going to tell her on Monday. We go through that all the time. How many of us says, we'll do it tomorrow? How many of us will say, I'm going to call my mom tomorrow, or my family tomorrow? We don't know if we have tomorrow. So the second thing you should focus on is to make sure you focus on the future. Be positive about the future, not negative. We don't know the future. We don't know the past, or we have experienced the past. And also, do not make the failures you had today as an excuse for why you can't achieve your success. Who knows what would have happened if I told Mary that um, her, her daughter passed away that day. But I do know one thing. Because of that experience, I'm a technical instructor and I'm in a better situation. So remember, always think about the future. Forget about the past and never use failures of today as an excuse for not achieving your goals. Madam Toastmaster.